I've been so alone ever since I left the tribe. That's just how it goes, cause I like the yo what is up guys surgical goblin here and welcome to this new episode in today's video i'm going over the recording versus cmq i mentioned this in my last video that i lost the video but carlitos um checked the recycle bin so where you delete the files and he luckily found the like the gameplay so the replays so i will still show the the gameplay as you guys can see right now i'm showing the his profile cmq his profile so in today's video i'm going over the recordings the best of five versus cmq here you can see the deck I will use. So I will explain the episode first, but uh, meanwhile I will still like have the recording going of course. So that is why you guys know it's not live. I did record this live. I recorded this in Spain, but unfortunately uh, we lost like the, um, the audio and the face cam because something went wrong with rendering. But I do want to bring this episode because I think it has some great decks, some great gameplay. And I hope you guys will enjoy it. It is a really long episode. So I'll probably make a comment in the, the comment section with like the timestamps of match 1, match 2, match 3, match 4, etc, match 5. So here I said first game no ban. I will be um, showing it on my iPad by the, by the way. So that's why I will be looking down like during the matches. But I hope that's no problem. So first game no ban. And as you guys saw I picked the minor deck. So the first game I will be using a minor control deck. A really cheap cycle deck. And of course I mean right now I could tell what CMC will use. But I will just commentate it from my like perspective. So you guys don't know what's coming. And I pretend to know or also not know what's coming. So the first... Um, like moment both players saying good luck thumbs up i start off with the ice spirit pretty passive and night witch in the back i believe yeah so he drops his tombstone i'll start off with a night witch in the back and let's see what he will drop so a tombstone could be a lava loon the lava loon deck but here he shows archers so um like knowing like uh, see, seeing the the tombstone and the archer i mean that that most like most of the times and the mega main over here that most of the time should be um a graveyard cycle he also has a knight so i'm like 90% sure he has graveyard cycle it could be expo as well but expo often uh, uses inferno and not the tombstone so there you go there he has his ice golem i have my goblins ready and i will right away pressure the other lane with the night witch knowing that he either has to overspend on the goblins or i counter it pretty well i send in a miner to those arches the miner will one shot an archer and then tank for the bats the night witch actually got two hits in on the tower and look at the damage we're dealing we're chipping away really well the mega main was cleaning up our bats and while doing that the, the miner was still chipping away so his tower or we uh we almost dealt over 2000 damage into the first minute about the first minute of the game and we defended quite well as you guys can or as you guys saw like we um or i i dropped goblins i mean and he like either as i said like he either had to overspend on the the goblins to counter them or we counter his graveyard for two elixirs so the goblins in this meta is a really like strong uh card in my opinion like really solid it even works really well for his, uh hawk rider as well etc and you can play mind games with them like when you know they will try to predict you you cannot place them down so right here i'm just trying to keep the pressure up forcing him to uh defend or like uh tower trade but knowing that i have the goblins i can be aggressive and he has to always overspend on like my counter so there you go i will drop a look i will drop an ice spirit just to be sure i don't take too much damage and at this moment i'm like should i defend or should i attack and at this moment in the game i know that i i should attack as well i should keep the pressure up but i know that i should not like overcommit or not overspend so i will send in the night witch i will send in the ice golem i could have poisoned over here but i think i will keep my poison for defense but i i actually drop goblins i will lock again maybe this lock was a little bit too early but it still hits many skeletons i dropped the ice spirit as well and right here i knew that i should pressure so i believe i'll go with the ice golem and night witch in the middle because there's only 20 seconds left i dropped my miner into his arches as you guys can see his arches or he dropped his arches into my miner i guess because my miner was already there um and his arches weren't so as you guys can see 10 seconds left i can drop a defensive poison and goblins knowing that he would not like deal enough damage because goblin or the poison in one tick like one shots the skeletons we had goblins there he did it a really nice look but that was still gg so i gave him the good game the well played and in this episode i believe i will talk and like um <clears throat> sorry guys and switch decks as well so maybe sometimes it will be um like it's a pretty long episode but as i said i will put timestamps in the comment section down below because i don't want to mess with this recording right now i have it um like this is the original recording so that is why 
So I ban heal. Just because I don't want to like deal with the heal spell. I really like poison deck. So and I think CMC knows that. So look at his ban. This ban was actually really interesting. So I ban heal spell. I'm asking for his ban. This was the first matchup. As you guys can see both decks. Uh, I was using minor control. He was using a uh, graveyard cycle. And he bans the poison. So this was a really interesting moment. Because I wanted to play minor control again. But as you guys can see here is the, um, the Lope deck. And I'm pretty sure I will change the inferno for the tombstone. Knowing that poison is banned. So I gave him the good luck. And I think I will. Yeah there you go. So right here I will put in tombstone for instead of the inferno. Knowing that he um, or that poison is not in place, so he either has to fireball or if he has lightning, but lightning, of course, it will be a negative trait. So I think Tombstone is a pretty uh, smart like option with these bands. And this is actually really funny if you look at the deck pick, like what deck he will pick right now and what deck I will pick right now. You guys will see it soon. So again, both players giving the thumbs up. Uh, I gave him the good luck as well. So I throw in uh, the Goblin Barrel to be like aggressive to see what he's playing. And there's his Princess and his Goblin Gang. So the second match we're actually having a mirror matchup. So right here I will drop my lock into his Goblin Gang and his Princess. Knowing that I have the Goblin Gang for his barrel. Uh, we have the Knight coming towards the right side. He drops his own Knight. So I will drop the Princess in the other lane. And he, he, like right now his move is really smart. He will drop a goblin barrel and then a preemptive lock knowing that I don't have the lock and cycle so I had to drop my goblin gang. So CMC really well played. Here's his princess. I drop a dart goblin into his princess so the dart goblin will get killed by the princess shot and the tower. So right here um, I, like, I know I, sh I could have locked but I just tried to uh, keep my lock in cycle because I know he could have out cycled us. And we spent quite a bit of elixir so he protects his princess really well played by him. I have the princess and here um, it paid off that I kept my Loki cycle because otherwise maybe I would not have enough elixir and then he could have thrown it right on the tower. He was trying to trick us by but, um, but looking at the shadow we could tell it was a tricky barrel. So there you go there's this large goblin here I will make a big mistake which will cost us a lot of damage. I dropped my goblin gang in the middle thinking that he might predict the goblin gang but that, uh, that cost us I think like 200-300 damage so that's unfortunate. Uh, here I tried to switch up my dart goblin placement maybe he expected it in the middle so I dropped it towards the right side because maybe he thought um, I would drop it in the middle towards the left lane there's where uh, where I had the damage so let's drop the knight I dropped the knight for his goblin gang they will clean it up of course the knight will die I think the tower will clean it up right now because the goblin gang has a lot of dps he does drop his knight and right now we're pretty equal we're going into overtime and I think we're uh, playing really well but right now his like his double elixir time is like he's being really aggressive and he's playing so well. Uh, pay attention to like what he's doing etc. So he drops his goblin gang into the middle. He's going with an aggressive princess at the bridge. The dart goblin actually distracted it. He's protecting his princess so he's playing this really well. He has a dart goblin in the middle but it dies to our dart goblin. But his princess is getting a lot of value on uh, the goblin gang etc. And uh, we don't have too much troops on the field. He does go with a barrel as well. So we defended that quite well. But I'm not sure where the moment is. But he played like at one moment into the game. He played super well. And we made a big mistake. So right here I dropped the princess at the middle. Knowing that he would drop his princess in, uh, in the middle as well. He dropped his dart goblin to snipe our princess. And I went with the goblin barrel here. I think he has lock in cycle. So he can just lock that. There you go. There's his lock in cycle. I will drop the dart goblin defensive again. And I'm just trying to keep my lock and cycle for his barrel because I don't want to take too much damage. And the princess does um, splash damage our dart goblin but it survives so it will kill the knight. But I think the princess will kill it right now. Here's another tricky barrel. As I said you can tell it by the shadow. If you guys never see like the difference. I would suggest try to practice it with your teammates. But here's a moment where he played really well. He dropped his goblin gang for, his, um, for our barrel. I dropped the goblin gang straight into the princess. That was really bad. I dropped the lock over here. I had a prince as well. But his princess is chipping away really um, like a lot of damage. So at this moment he played really well. We do kill his princess but still he dealt a lot of damage. And we can't really go offensive because he constantly has the, um, the lock in cycle. So he's playing this mirror match really really well. He's being more aggressive than the other lock pay player. And that is what you often should do in mirror matches like with the miner as well. We can get more minor poisons on the tower. Same situation right here. Like we can get more chip damage. We did get the knight on uh, the right side. But still like right now I throw another barrel. He will have the lock in cycle again. And I was making a big mistake by not like pressuring here. I will try to get aggressive. But I think he will counter uh, pretty well. 
I sort of went all in, like I dropped Princess as well. I will drop a Goblin Barrel, and I think a big mistake right here is trying to go offensive with the lock. I think if I defended it, um, I would not have taken too much damage, and I think I could have still like... Um, not, not like be around the same damage, but maybe yes, because we dealt quite a bit of damage, but we took so much because we took the barrel. And I think if we had a look, like save the look for his barrel, uh, we could have done a little bit more, I guess. But this is GG for sure. I think I will look like the, the right lane and just, yeah, I would just rocket and look for to get some damage. But he played this really well, so right now it's 1 1. Definitely props to CMC for playing this mirror matchup so well. And there you guys have it, like there you guys can see uh, why you should be more aggressive, just to get more chip damage. And I guess also try to get more value out of the princess, I think I've, I placed the princess pretty, pretty poorly. Um, same for the goblin gang, I think I placed it twice into his princess, so that was uh, better my, like on my part. Because I could have used the goblin gang to counter his barrel as well, but I never did it. So right here, I will try to play the minor deck again. Uh, there you go, I will ban heal again, uh, as I said in the beginning, I just didn't want to play first 3 mask heal decks, like I didn't want to um, get hard countered. So right here I, have, I will um, show my decks real quick, so I have a giant skeleton graveyard deck as well, I showed a 3 mask heal deck, but of course I can't use the 3 mask heal deck, and the last deck slot was a little bit of a troll deck, so I didn't have too much decks for this one ready, but I think I will, um, so he bans night witch, so um, so I will actually, not really a mind game, but I will actually stick to the same deck, but just switch two cards around. I will put the Inferno Tower and the Ice Spirit. The Ice Spirit because it has a quicker cycle. The Inferno Tower because it's consistent for his tank decks. And banning the Night Witch, I was thinking about what he, he could run. Um, he could probably expect, or I was expecting like a tank deck, for example, like a Golem deck, a Giant deck. Because the Night Witch right now is such a strong melee card, it can actually deal with Golem and Giants quite nice. And if the heal spell is banned, like, poison will be really strong. So I think maybe I was expecting, like, golem poison or something like that. But I wasn't sure, of course. So I decided to use lockbait again. Uh, so both players saying good luck. Thumbs up as well. And I will start off with a princess in the back. Just to be passive. Just to, like, um, not show too much. He showed goblins. So I was like, he definitely... Um, Switch deck, he's not using Lockbait anymore. And there's his Inferno Dra or um, his Baby Dragon, I mean. So at this moment, I was sort of right, like with my mind games, I was I was expecting Golem. There is his Lock, so I was thinking about Golem all, all game long. But he actually sold some different cards, and you guys will see that soon. So the Baby Dragon is being tanked, and there you go, there is his Bandit. So I was like, um, is this, uh, or is this uh, Golem, or what is this? There's his Electro Wizard, so right now I was like, I'm not sure if this is Golem. So I'll drop an Ice Spirit for his Bandit, the Tower and the Princess should be able to clean it up quite nice. I will go with another Goblin Barrel and there is his Battle Ram. So right now I'm sure it's not, um, it's Poison as well, there's his Poison. So right now I was sure it was not like, um, Golem I mean, it's not Golem at this moment, I knew it was not Golem for sure. And I was expecting the last card to be P.E.K.K.A and it is P.E.K.K.A as well, he didn't show it yet. But this is a P.E.K.K.A deck without Collector, it actually has Goblins in it. So I would say this is a 50-50 matchup, he has great offense, um, we can defend his offense and he can defend our offense, but I guess we could outcycle him. But here I made a mistake by dropping the knight in the back, knowing that he has a bandit. He recognized that he saw an option, or he saw um, another option, I, I guess a moment or something, I'm not sure how to call that. But he's, he saw like a chance, I guess, to go with a bandit at the bridge, knowing that my goblin gang is out of cycle. And here I was lagging really bad, as you guys can see. I was trying to drop my princess, I have two princes on the field right now, and I misclicked because of that, so the princess died, the battle room will actually connect, and I was actually really angry at this moment because I was recording live, and I took like 1000 damage because of the lag over there, so that was really unfortunate, luckily I didn't lag at, um, in the rest of the episode, you guys will see that uh, soon of course, but I was actually really angry, I tried to trick him with a tricky barrel, like show, um, switching up the placement, but he recognized it, he had a really nice look, he was ready for the tricky barrel. So right now I'm just cycling, I think I will rocket his baby dragon to get some chip damage, we need to catch up with the damage because he connected with the better ram, uh, the baby dragon as well. And right now we're leading with damage and we know that our defense is quite solid. So I will drop my inferno tower, I will drop a knight as well, I dropped the knight to block the electro wizard, but it's still like... Um, it's still, uh, how do you say that, it, it's still uh, stunned, it's still stunned the Inferno. I dropped the Goblin Gang into the poison, which was unfortunate. As so many things going on right now, he's really aggressive, he's uh, really like keeping the pressure up. So definitely well played by CMC. And I couldn't really get damage in with the barrels. 
So I think I will um, just defend one more time or try to keep like uh, get his lock out of cycle I guess. I'll drop the inferno tower right now and I'll drop a goblin gang to distract. Unfortunately a few goblins get hit by the um, by his lock on our barrel. And right here is a moment where I try to out cycle him but his defense is really well. What, uh, watch attention to his defense. So he will drop a bandit far enough to dash one of the goblins. The other goblins to hit um, the two goblins on the side. And he didn't took any damage at all. We have the Inferno Tower for his uh, Baby Dragon, we have the Knight for his Bandit, I'll drop an Ice Spirit to freeze this all. And the tower was luckily um, shooting the Bandit first, if it targeted the Barbarian, the Bandit might have dashed on top of the tower. And right now he's playing really well, he's uh, really aggressive, he outcycled our Inferno Tower. I dropped the Goblin Gang to the side, as you guys can see a little bit laggy over there. And the Baby Dragon locked on the tower, so he's playing just really well, there you go, there's his P.E.K.K.A. He didn't play it uh, the entire game yet, but right there, I'm not sure why he drilled, uh, dropped it right there. His Electro was into the um, Inferno Tower. Bad Inferno Tower, like the placement of us. But we were still able to kill the Electro Wizard with the help of the Princess, the Lock as well. And I go with the Barrel again, but he's slowly chipping away. And I know it's over, like in the beginning we took too much damage with the Batteram. And we weren't able to get any damage in. Again, a little bit laggy, I believe it. Um, no lag at all in the rest of the episode. So I'm definitely sorry for that guys, like the, the leg right now a little bit, but it was really unfortunate for sure. So right here I look, I believe I go with a barrel uh, princess as well, just to chip away ice spirit, I think goblin gang, I would just drop everything basically. I'm not sure if that is the moment, no this is not the moment yet, but at the end it was actually quite close. You guys will see that soon. So I dropped the goblin gang in the middle, again laggy, of, uh, luckily the baby dragon did target it, and right here is his, his look and his ice spirit, or and his... Um, it's poison I mean so I throw ice spirit I had a look right there I had a uh, goblin as well but he had enough time to get it so at the end it was quite close maybe if I didn't took almost 1000 damage because of the lag it could have been different but he played it really really well with keeping uh, track of the cycle so right now it's two ones for CMC and here our type was lagging so that's unfortunate but he would play it really well as I said like he was out cycling our inferno with the bandit and he was playing this really well, so there you go, there's his matchup, there's the matchups, um, the second one, and this was the last one, so a P.E.K.K.A deck, no Night Witch because he bent the Night Witch, so he had um, Goblins, he had the Electro Wizard as well, and right now I will play with this Giant Skeleton deck, I think this Giant Skeleton deck is really solid, so I decided to ban P.E.K.K.A um, for some mind games, like he would expect maybe Giant, I think Giant is really good with the P.E.K.K.A ban, I think Golem is really good with the P.E.K.K.A ban, and I could even play something like Lava Hound, but I decided to play Giant Skeleton. And I decided to um, to play it with the Graveyard, like Giant Skeleton is something you barely see. And I think this deck is actually really solid, 3.6 Elixir average cost. And as you guys can see, I, I typed CMC, but it's not needed, like we are with the two of us. So I deleted and I said good luck. And I keep switching arenas, I think you guys notice it in some other episodes as well. I just do it for fun, no reason behind it. So right now in the P.E.K.K.A Playhouse... And as I said, with the Giant Skeleton Graveyard deck, so we gave good luck. And uh, let's see. So I think I will start off, yeah, I think I will drop the Electro Wizard. He showed the Ice Spirit, so that could be a uh, lock bait, but he showed uh, Goblin. So I was maybe thinking like Graveyard Cycle with Princess. That deck is quite common. And right here he showed the Electro Wizard. So I was thinking um, maybe the, the Pekka Graveyard deck, but that doesn't have uh, Ice Spirit in it. So right now I wasn't sure what he's using. He showed a Night Witch as well. So at this moment I wasn't sure he's, what he's using, like I think maybe some of you guys if you think about the cards you could already tell what deck. But while playing this I remember I didn't know what deck he was using. And uh, he showed poison as well, but let, let's pause the video right now guys, pause the video. Or um, or and, and then comment what you guys think. Because I really didn't know but right now he will show his deck and then I was like oh of course so there you go there's his giant. And right now all makes sense. I made a video on this deck as well. Giant Cycle with Miner. But at first I really didn't know what deck he was playing. So I go with a Night Witch into the same lane. He drops his Electro Wizard. I think I'll drop, yeah, I'll drop an Ice Golem to tank. And I'm not sure if I will drop anything else. Uh, um, let's see, maybe Goblins. I'm not sure. Or I will lock the Giant because I'm about to hit. Yeah, I will lock the Giant. I was about to hit an Elixir. Just to not get full an Elixir. I dropped Goblins on the left corner but he didn't place them there. So he's getting a little bit of chip damage with his miner. Uh, let's see if I drop... Yeah, oh, he actually... Yeah, <laughs> I remember this moment. He cycled giants like he started all the way in the back. And then with the same Electro Wizard, he dropped another giant. And a poison really, really well played by CMC. And right now I was in a really bad situation. 
And I think I'll, I'll get a little bit desperate right here. I believe I'll go with the Ice Golem and Graveyard. But I don't even have enough Elixir for the... Um, oh, I will actually... Yeah, so there you go. I locked this Goblins. And I, I didn't even have enough Elixir for the Poison. But I still dropped Graveyard, which was really good. So I said, oops, good game. At this moment, it was a really bad situation. But look at the Graveyard. The Graveyard dealt so much damage, guys. I wasn't expecting this at all. I dropped Goblins on the right side, knowing that he will go with a, um, knowing that he will go with a giant. He will go with a, a giant as well, or with a poison as well. I mean, I had the Electro Wizard for his miner, and there were so many things going on in this matchup. But he's slowly chipping away, and I knew that we had to get damage in. So I decided to go with a giant skeleton graveyard combination. He actually had the Night Witch there, so I didn't drop my graveyard yet. And right here, I was like, okay, let's try, uh, try to trade towers. Maybe it was a bad idea because graveyard is um, less strong if you have two towers. And here I made another mistake. I took the tower and I still tried to defend his giant. As you guys can see, I dropped the electro wizard into the giant. And he poisoned there as well. If I didn't drop the electro wizard, but if I would have went offensive, maybe he could, have, um, could not have defended it. Like with night witch and graveyard or something like that. Uh, right now, as you guys can see, 21 spectators, by the way, quite a lot of in-game spectators, 22 right now, quite a lot of in-game uh, in spectators, and at this moment, I knew I had to be patient, I knew I had to find that one moment for the graveyard, just because um, he has goblins, he has two towers to shoot on the graveyard, and I knew that I had to find a moment where he didn't have lock-in cycle, and goblins not in cycle, and uh, this is like a really tough situation. Uh, two minutes left, 30 seconds left, and this go this goes all the way to the end. As you guys can see, we're both not really committing elixir, both like cycling defensive cards. So I dropped my giant skeleton for his um for his ice wizard. I believe our or for his um Ewis, I mean not ice wizard. Our Ewis dies. The giant skeleton is there on his Ewis. I will drop Night Witch, I will drop Ice Golem for his um giant Night Witch push. I will look at as well just to uh, not take too much damage. And as you guys can see, we defended that quite well, but we're not really uh, committing any elixir. He goes in with the miner and the ice spirit. We drop our electro wizard, but the electro wizard will die, I think. No, it will actually survive with a sliver of HP left. Um, but I think it will die to the tower right now. It will not really get any hits. No, it will, it will, it didn't get any hits. Right here, I dropped the night witch. Look at the night witch, guys. This is really crazy because he poisoned. But look at the night witch. It turned around to get to the goblin. Um, to go for the goblin, the goblin died and it turned around again towards the other lane so the night witch didn't get too much damage or um, uh, they didn't get hurt by the poison I guess uh, right now like we're not really committing to the, to uh, to any pushes I dropped the giant skeleton for his giant uh, night witch here I will lock his goblins and electro wizard and I think that will die I think we, um, we defend his push quite well but his uh, giant still has quite a lot of HP left he has two giants right now uh, I dropped the Electro Wizard for the pets, and look at this push, uh, like right now his push is really insane. I drop a lock to, um, to um, I guess, damage his troops, but also like knock back his troops. And 1000 HP left on our tower, and we don't go offensive, like I, I couldn't go offensive at all, because I knew that he could just counter it with two Elixir, and then he was able to go uh, like offensive. I had to find, uh, find that one moment. And luckily, I found that one moment, like, eventually, as you guys can see soon. I will drop the Ice Golem to distract this Electro Wizard. Right here, I will go with a Giant Skeleton. I will go with a Graveyard. He goes with a Miner and a Lock. He commits all his Elixir. I will um, Lock his Miner just to make sure it doesn't get, like, the damage it needed. And there you go, the Giant Skeleton. He didn't have Locker Cycle. He didn't have enough for Poison. And, wow, the Giant Skeleton Graveyard actually took down the tower. So really, really well played by CMC in that matchup. As I said, like we had to find that one moment. Otherwise, it was impossible to come through his defense. And that was definitely GG. What a game. And wow, I, I like I, I didn't know. Like my reaction was uh, way more insane like back then because I was live commentating. Right now I'm going over the replays. I already knew what was coming. But the reaction back then was insane. Unfortunately, I lost that. Um, as you guys know. But right now it's 2-2 right now. So absolutely insane. 2-2 two -two for CMC. And I think I will ban uh, heal spot right now. As I said, like I like to use poison, and I really don't want to play first three musk uh, heal deck. So I actually decided to copy his um, to actually copy his like like giant deck. I guess it's not his giant deck, but he used his giant deck. So I copied it. Uh, he says um, new ban. So I was like, what should I ban? So I decided to just ban heal spell again, like giant giant poison. If he plays three must heal, I'm not sure if he even plays three must heal. I just don't want to get hard countered. So I decided to ban heal spell. 
And I think with this giant deck, the only like uh, bad matchups you could have is maybe Pekka Bedouin with Collector. But even then, you can punish Collectors. And I think this deck is really, really solid. I would say the only hard counter to this is 3 Mask Heal Cycle. Because even for Spekka, you could switch it towards a minor control deck. And then you have a really solid damage with um, and just chipping away, not using your giant. So there you go. I say good luck. He bends Collector. Which I was like, I wasn't sure if I want to use the giant deck. Because the giant deck can really punish Collectors really well. And I wasn't sure what he would use either. Just because like Ben Collector that deletes a lot of decks. Like uh, it deletes Pekka, Pekka Bedouin. But he decided, or he actually used Pekka... Uh, better round without collector so i really wasn't sure what he would use right now so i gave him the thumbs up and the good luck he will do the same and i think i will start off with goblins in the back just to cycle um yeah there you go so he starts off with a night witch i'll drop goblins in the back and a night witch in the back as well so not a really bad start but of unfortunately we did have to spend two elixir to cycle to the night witch but i guess um his night witch will fight on our side of the tower or uh, our side of the arena, I guess. Our tower will help, I mean. So I had a giant coming there. And he had goblins as well. So I decided to lock and send in a miner towards the electro wizard. To be able to tank and to kill this electro wizard. So he defensive poisons. And right now he showed the ice column. He showed night witch. And he showed electro wizard. So I was like, is this um, graveyard cycle? So I have my goblins ready. As you guys can see, I already have my goblins ready in case he had the graveyard. I will drop an ice spirit for his night witch. To freeze it, the tower will kill it, and I think we only take one damage, or not even, so no damage at all. And let's see, I go with a Night Witch again. I think I'm up in Elixir right now, because he didn't drop anything, and looks like he's leaking. So there you go, there is his Electro Wizard. I will go with a Giant again, and I didn't know what he's playing at all. But here you go, here he will reveal, he has a P.E.K.K.A. So I said wow, and I think, yeah, I called good game right here, because I was like, no way I will beat this matchup. So he has the P.E.K.K.A. right there, his Electro Wizard will die to the poison. And like his, his P.E.K.K.A. actually died as well, so again I have my Goblins ready. In case he will go with the Graveyard, I constantly have my Goblins ready. Like if you're reactive with your Goblins, you can negate most of, most of the damage. Sometimes even um, don't take damage at all. So I drop my Goblin, or he was in the back. And right here I will drop Goblins and right away Night Witch in the other lane. And this is really key because he overcommitted. He dropped, um, let's see, he dropped 11 Elixir right there. I spent 5 elixir to counter that, and look at the other lane, he doesn't have anything, he spent his lock right there, I think he dropped goblins or something as well, he's calling good game, I call good game as well, knowing that there's 1 minute left, knowing that we can just defend his pushes, we have defensive poison for his graveyard, we have a lock, we have an electro wizard, we have so many defensive cards in this deck as well, so I decided to poison his electro wizard to poison the tower as well. Just to get some damage. Really nice block by him with the Ice Golem. And I think I will lock his Electro Wizard. There you go. I will lock his Electro Wizard. I will drop Ice Spirit for his um, for his Night Witch. I will wait a little bit with the Electro Wizard. And there you go. I will drop it into the graveyard. He did have a poison over there. But I just don't want to take too much damage. And right now there's only 20 seconds left. I will drop a Giant. I think I will just sort of go all in. Like keep the pressure up I guess. Forcing him to um, to defend that. I think I'll drop Ice Spirit as well. And then I'll save my poison for defense. I know that he could maybe get one more graveyard push. So I actually look in offense right now. I have my poison ready. Uh, four seconds left. I believe. Yeah, there you go. He will drop his graveyard. But it's already a good game. I dropped my defensive poison. So good game. Well played. Thumbs up. So there you guys have it. 3 2 first CMC. I really hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Even though it's still replays. So definitely props to CMC. I will include his Twitter. I will include his Twitch in the description. So definitely go follow him over there. Definitely give him some support over there. And as I said, like crazy, crazy episode. Smack that like button if you enjoyed this episode. If you're not subscribed to my channel yet, feel free to subscribe. And I hope to see you in one of my next videos. Bye.